to move more time? Uh, it's just I, the last three on the bottom that you need to worry about the most. I can roll. Well, I can't write it out. Oh, yeah. Okay. 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 Alright. Okay. What encouraged you the most personally about the same? Yeah, I mean heavily focused on that idea of paying closer attention and it really caused me to have to check my own life where have i not been caring that much where have i been letting things slip so it was really challenging but in the same way like encouraging because like ah i can't grow in these things and that's what god wants for me so <laughs> this way um yeah, I think, uh, I think, uh, I really appreciate, like, how, like, focused your person was on, like, trying to, uh, like, get me to, like, remember, like, why, hmm. um, why these things are important and, and not, like, not fall into, like, habits of familiarity, um, so, it was, it was convicting, it was, like, good to hear again, for sure. Uh, yeah, I was encouraged and challenged, you know, uh, with the question that you asked that we can know the gospel so much we can tune it out, mm -hmm. you know, and so as people that want to be focused on the gospel, you know, that's something that we need to take heed to. Thanks, Nathan. Um, one phrase in there uh, was encouraging and it's kind of mulling over my mind and that is um you said make every effort to remain in jesus mm. you know, and I'm, I'm calvinist i believe god keeps us but there is this uh this emphasis in scripture that not only because you have heard that phrase make every effort i'm thinking of uh you know i think peter and i'm a, i forget exactly what he uses but i usually think of like make every effort to obey christ mm. But you said make every effort to remain in him mm -hmm. and uh just kind of stuck in my head it's like you know what i think that is a, a push of, of scripture uh to just simply <laughs> remain because as soon as you sort of get too comfortable you can you can drift like you were saying so appreciate it yeah it was a uh, the last year has been challenging on those ideas as well for me so mm -hmm. so i was encouraged too because you kept before well, for me personally, is the way you kept before us, which really is stake. I mean, you did that by mm. asking different questions and pointing out, you know, that this this really matters. And at the same time, it was an encouraging, uh, particularly the piece where you talk about knowing the gospel, mm. but also living out the truth of the gospel, mm. um, which is very helpful. So, what could you have done to? Yeah, um, I guess my biggest kind of, there's a lot of things that I changed last minute, so I just, I felt like I was running through some sections kind of chaotically, but um, yeah, I guess it's um, kind of ended kind of quickly to your conclusion this morning just made me think wow i suck at conclusions <laughs> so i really want to just be better at that as well okay good um, i think uh I think I got your main like argument pretty like pretty succinctly. I think there were like just like one or two times sometime mm. that I wasn't like I wasn't sure like I I couldn't feel how that like connected to like this idea of paying attention. Gotcha. Um you started getting into like a little bit of like like uh 
various like uh, spiritual gifts and the Holy Spirit at the end. And I like I had a hard time seeing like how you were like connecting that. Like, yeah. Like, point of Thank, you. Uh, Thank you. Yeah. Uh, even though I just said something I was challenged by was like, you know, the gospel world, we need to um, not tune it out, so we need to focus on, be reminded of, of it. Um, I was sort of waiting a little bit mm. about this great salvation in verse 3 to remind us of that. Mm. Yeah. I was like, I need to hear that again. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, no. Yeah, that was... I tried to saturate it all in the gospel and not necessarily kind of have it like a peak, but obviously that has its problems and I didn't successfully do it. (laughs) Two things I wrote down here is uh, one... um, Just give us one. Just one. Oh, okay, okay. Um, One of my kind of a question was what were the original audience tempted to drift towards? Hmm. Perhaps you did answer that at some point, and I was just thinking of something else, but I think it might have helped me appreciate more, because you did talk about how some situations where we today could drift, mm-hmm. and I was kind of wondering, you know, what were the... Yeah, hey. that's enough said. <clears throat> that's good. So, I think the sermon could have been um, improved if you had uh, altered the shape of it. So, the it seemed like it was heavy. It was front loaded mm-hmm. because you didn't get to. You, you said okay, the number two, and that was like at the seven forty-five. Mm-hmm. So it's like okay. So I don't know how you're gonna get three in if you took that off with one and yeah. two. So if you. Uh, could have figured out a way to balance out the last two points a little bit better or cut down the first point Hmm. somehow or another. Uh, I think the shape of the sermon would have helped move the sermon along with it at a better clip. Gotcha. We're going around it again, feel. Okay. Um, Yeah. I, I didn't write anything down for like a second thing to improve. Um, I think this one like little. Like, I've gotten nitpicky with others. You can get <laughs> nitpicky with me. <laughs> At the beginning and in your intro, you said the word like mm. a lot. I have to watch two words, like and um, and I watched one of them apparently and not the other one. <laughs> The verse two part of Moses and law of just retribution for sins, you're, I thought you're explaining it well, and um, it seems like might have been something to amplify on, but mm. it is contrasted with this great salvation. Gotcha. And so I feel like it was kind of maybe not enough time on that to like really bring the significance to that. You're just going to get me on that great salvation. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, one of my thoughts, and, and this could just be more how I'm used to listening to sermons. This is my first one here, and, and uh, you know, my pastor, I've come to appreciate his style, and maybe it's just a bit of a different style, but um, he goes back to the scripture a lot and like reads the line mm. and then explains his point. And so I found myself sometimes getting a little bit confused as to where you were. Yeah, and one thing that I forgot to do that I wanted to do was when I was giving my points in the beginning, I wanted to say which verses they were with, and I it just blanked on that. So, <laughs> I, yeah. So, oh, along with that, I think that um, the introduction could have been cut down. Mm. As a matter of fact, you, when you got to the part where you said pay attention, and then you start talking about your experiences of middle school mm-hmm. 
I'm like, okay, well, this could have been the answer. To the answer right I there. thought so many <laughs> times. But yeah. We cut out the rest and uh, started in right there and it uh, pulled us, um, it pulled us right in. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, next time you preach it, I would consider, um, yeah. consider doing that. And also, if I'm, maybe um, your main argument was pay close attention to what you believe because what you believe has been proven true. And then the second one was because it's been proclaimed by, and then it got fuzzy. You I didn't pro proclaim yeah. by important people or proclaimed by something yeah. about what you said. That was something I was thinking about a lot. And I don't think I ever, in my mind, fully came to a conclusion. And therefore, it was unclear to me and unclear to you. Okay. Well, what did you do well that you were trying to work on this thing? I think I stayed on the point for the most part. Um, I think I was able to push that, use things to push it in different directions, um, which was helpful. Yeah, so I think that's the biggest thing for me. Good. Great. Um, I definitely walked away with like, like um, the the main the main emphasis of the text is like rain. I think you repeated it like several times, and that was like that was, that was that's that's good. Mm -hmm. That's like the right way for people to walk away. Like, mm -hmm. I walked away from the sermon being like paying attention. <laughs> yeah, me too. Yeah, good. yeah, I thought you kind of brought us into the context of, of uh, this passage really quick. Because it's so much that's there, so many awesome things that's there. Mm. So you can easily be sidetracked and just still talk about chapter one, but you brought us into chapter two real quick. Mm. Yeah. I like a few practical ideas of paying attention, and you kind of went on like students a little bit and how they need to maybe write notes or, you know, in mm -hmm. way to studying, and then you related that to the Christian life. I thought that was, that was good, and then we could all relate. So. And so I too agree, uh, I too enjoy the context work and how you made the context work for your argument. Mm. And also I thought you did a really good job um, a few strategic places in talking about, um, like for example, you talked about how the twisting doesn't have to be too much. Mm. Mm. Talked about those pirates and 2% off. And there's a couple of places like that where you brought it back to us that, okay, I'm talking to you and you, listener, mm -hmm. are in danger of this if you're not paying attention to what I'm talking about. And so I thought you did a really good job of keeping it, uh, keeping it tight on not only your argument, but on the fact that, okay, I really need to listen to this. Mm. There's some mistake for me in it. So I thought you did a good job. Well, that's good. Jeremy's always critique is like, you were 3,000 feet in the air. <laughs> Bring it down to us. I'm like, oh. So, okay, that's good. <laughs> One more round. Mm -hmm. I think the illustrations are like, in general, pretty, like, pretty good and like, useful for me to like, see like, sometimes like I, I have a hard time like with illustrations that like, people don't see the connection from like, illustration to sermon. Mm -hmm. I think all your illustrations connected pretty well. Don't worry, you guys will, you'll get that ingrained in YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank um, you. Yeah, I thought you did the uh, handling of that. What this angels mean type of thing pretty well. You're like some people think it's this, but I think it means this, and this is why. Mm. Yeah. And, and then you went on with the main point of the passage, and I get caught up at whatever other people might think it means. Right. Kind of tying into fields there. I, I appreciate the illustration with uh, the Mars Hill, and that kind of uh, hit home a little bit. And and uh, how I think what I was saying too, you can just be a little bit off. And and um, I don't know if he was a little bit off, but from the outside, it maybe looks like that a bit. And then suddenly you're mm -hmm. miles off. And uh, yeah, those those helpful me to and and it, and it brought me into the sermon a bit more. So yeah, mm. this is important here. <clears throat> So especially in the, I think in the first section, uh, well, up, up throughout, I think you did a good job of asking and answering questions. 
So I'm trying to remember. Yeah, I think it was in the first section. Yeah. About how is the gospel proven true? And then you explained it. And went through it. There's a couple other places where it was a well placed statement, or oh, probably a well placed question that, yeah, uh, early on you said, why does he want them to pay attention? And you sort of went into why that was. So, again, I think overall it just was very engaging in the sense that not only was your main point clear, but you kept using different tools to keep it like mm. on our nose type of thing as opposed to, okay, yeah, this is just good information. Mm. So good job. Thank you, guys. Okay, that's under fire. <laughs>